I've got a lot of money invested in this company, Foster, and I'm not going to stand by and see that money go up in smoke. These robbers must stop. I know they must stop. What do you expect me to do beyond what I've already done? Our insurance man will tell you to what extent we've gone. Gentlemen, our insurance investigators are stumped. When the first truck was waylaid, we figured it would be quite a simple matter to trace the stolen skins. Not one of those skins have turned up in Canada. There isn't a clue that we can follow. Precisely. And the police have attained exactly the same point as the insurance investigator. I tell you, gentlemen, we are up against a shrewd, unscrupulous, organized mob. I'm afraid if these robberies continue, we'll have to cancel our policy with the Arctic Fur Company. I'm going into another session with the provincial police this afternoon. There is a possibility, however, that the furs are being smuggled across the border, or they haven't turned up in this country. On that basis, the customs authorities may be able to help. If the customs fail... Much as I hate to say it, it's the responsibility of the Canadian customs. I'm afraid there's not even room for an argument at that point. That's why I'm here tonight. You see, we have two sets of facts to work on. One is that furs are stolen in Canada. Second, that the furs of questionable origin turn up in San Francisco. Proving that somehow or other, the furs are run across the border. Presumably at this point. Right. Tie these two facts together and run them down. We'll have the solution of one of the worst cases of this kind in my experience. That's why I've assigned Tom Evans to this case. His work as a federal operator makes him ideally suited for the job. Naturally, in a case of this kind, it'll be necessary for me to work alone. Very good, Evans. Anything we can do to help? Yes, there is. I'll need the permission of the provincial police to operate in Canadian territory. You have it. We want to give you all the help we can to clear this case up. And please feel free to call upon me at any time when you're leaving. Uh, just as soon as Mr. Hendricks gives me final instructions. Well, if he's going on from here, I'll have one of the boys drive you back to headquarters. Thanks. I'll appreciate it. So, Tom Evans now becomes Tom Grayson. Right. Grayson, able-bodied, in need of employment, your destination is the Arctic Perkham. Uh, especially talented in the art of trucking. Or anything to land you on that payroll. Map out your own procedure and remember one thing. Take no unnecessary chance. Right. And while you're in Canada, I'll check on our San Francisco suspect, L.L. Williams. If you hear anything about it, let me know. I'll certainly do that. Williams. Initials L.L. Say, I used to fish on a Williams River when I was a kid. Then I'll be hearing from you. Right. Good luck and good fishing. Hello? Yes. Hold the line a minute. He's your Canadian call, Mr. Williams. Mike, this is Williams. I got another job for you up there. It's important. Sure I'm interested. But I always... Go ahead. It looks like a double cross, Mike. Yeah, somebody's lifting the best furs on those shipments coming down here. Now, I don't know whether it's Dapper and Silver doing this on their own or whether they're taking orders from Foster. But what I want you to do is get next to one of those trucks and find out what's going on. Jack, for a grand Mr. Williams, you ain't got any idea what I'd do. Right. Leave it to me. Hey, Tom, can you beat that? She's jealous, and after all the nice things I told her, too. That's just the trouble. You're too handy with that talk. Keep your eye on him, Tom. And put out your hand for a left turn if you can't set up a blog. Don't worry, I'll take care of him, all right. <laughs> That's a hot one. He'll take care of me when I'm supposed to be showing him the rope. Come on, Sammy, if those males don't load themselves, she's gonna be rolling out here by 11 shots tonight or else. Hey, Bill! All right, all right, you old schedule pusher. Lady, I'll be right back in your eyes next Saturday night. Yeah, with your week's pay just a perking memory of San Francisco. Hey, what is this? I thought you told me you'd be all ready. I just found something that needed fixing, but it's all set now. 
Bye bye, baby. Come on, Tom. Mind what I said, Tom. Blondes and blue eyes. Avoid them. It's all yours, Bill. Take it away. Good luck. Here, kid. Brought your seasick powders with you. First trips are funny sometimes. Are you quitting for the night, Tim? Yeah, set me up a bottle of pot while I fall. Sure. Make it lighter. Silver, this is 10. She's rolling out at 11 sharp, taking highway number three. Yeah, and listen. Somebody we know and don't like decided to have himself a trip and keep it a secret. He's inside. Yeah, but he won't care where he is soon. I had me an inspiration. Yeah, swell. Okay. You certainly know how to push this bus along. It's all I know in your job, Tommy boy, on the road. I could push this baby over the route with my eyes shut. Uh, how long do you think it'll be before they'll let me roll a truck out of my own? Well, that all depends on what I tell them about you. They take my word for everything. job hacking it back there for a while, but I couldn't make it pay enough to buy coffee and cigarettes. If you're talking of coffee, there's the best place along the line to get it, old Pop Miller. Yeah? Yeah. Go for a cup right now. stuff across the border. Cross my fingers and let her go. Yeah, but suppose you're rolling along, minding your own business, and a guy stops you and sticks a gun in your ribs. What then? That's a spot you can't figure your way out of until it happens. Any of the drivers hurt when the mob pulled them up? No. Say, a guy by the name of Steve Lane must have talked out a turn once. Yeah? Yeah. Disappeared. We never did know what happened to him. Pop's trade's improving. Yeah, I'll say it is. What are you going to have, lady? Why, well, I... What's the matter? Aren't you feeling well? No, I'm just all in from walking. Walking? Yes, you see, I, I was on my way to San Francisco. My gentleman, that's what he called himself, was driving to San Francisco and wanted a passenger. $25 in share expenses. <laughs> he got your money. Yes, and then he got fresh, so here I am. Oh, great. What are you going to do now? Do? I don't know. I, I've practically no money, and without it, I can't. <laughs> there, there. Don't worry. I'll get you a cup of coffee now, and we'll figure a way later to get you out of this. Hey. The company says strictly no riders. But it doesn't say anything about guests. Yeah, but maybe the gal isn't partial to trucks. I'll find out. Pardon me, lady, I, uh, well, I'm not exactly deaf. I couldn't help hearing what you told Pop about that cross-country taxi turnip and... 
Uh, well, I was thinking, we got a truck outside. And if you don't mind riding between Tom and me, Tom's my partner, that guy right there. We could run you right through to Frisco. That's where we're going and in a hurry. And I think that's swell of you. Careful, Bill. Don't take no for your job. Oh, well, if it's going to cause... Oh, it isn't going to cause anything. Except getting you where you want to get. Furthermore, uh, Bill needs someone to talk to him. Uh, I'm mostly what's known as a listening type. And I'm what's known as a talking type. Shake. Yeah, and that's what uh, makes this business so romantic. Yeah, always the smell of good, clean, pure gasoline. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, anyway, it's handy before it's getting me. 50 miles an hour and no fare. Uh, you're going to be in San Francisco long? Maybe. That is until the next good-looking truck comes along. Don't you love the way they sneak these things up on you? Yeah, big help to a fellow schedule. Went into it like babes in the woods. Hey, Skip, Pete, get those saw horses off the highway. Come on, you heard them. This is no funeral, business-like, see? Okay. That must be wrong. I'll get out and have a look. Now, wait a minute, Tom. This is my party. You stay with Patricia. I'll do the looking. One thing about Bill, if his nose smells trouble, he's always ready to follow his nose. Those are bad news, eh? Yeah. Say, what's the big idea? If you can't drive this car, why don't you... Get over it. Get out. Slip into the brush somewhere, anyone. But I don't want to get out. I... Hurry up. Do as I say. We're on a spot. Up there, Skip. There's someone else. Move. It's a dame, Skip. Move, I tell you. Hey, get up there with him. That mug is made of lint. All right, buddy, reach. Get going. A pair of brilliant boys to let a skirt put one over on you. Ah, uh, big shot talk, huh? You guys are nothing but a lot of tin. Why don't you button up your lip or I'll give you something. Go on back there with Skip and find her. She's gone. We couldn't find her any place. A nice pair of bloodhounds you are. Either of you guys gonna tell me who she was? Why she was on that truck? I told you she was only a tourist. All right. You and Skip take the truck. We gotta get out of here. Okay. And roll them fast. Any tricks out of you guys in this dead turkeys? All right. Come on. Let's go. Step on. Come on.
Hey, we gotta be snappy with this. Come on. Okay, let's get out of here. Come on. Hurry up. Else. Why don't you try talking to yourself if you gotta say anything? You and that son of yours get me nuts. Now stop bothering me. The truck will be here any minute. Is Skip driving? What do you think? Is he good for anything else? Hey, you leave Skip alone, will you? He's got work to do, even if you don't like it. Someday, Dapper. Yeah, You're yeah, going to... Yeah, yeah. Something's gonna happen around here. I know. There she is, Silver. Come on, let's go. Get out in front. Come on, get out in front and see that nobody comes in. We got work to do. Hey, Pete, what time you got? What difference does it make? You won't be sleeping tonight. <laughs> All work and no play makes the balls a happy day. You guys gonna make a picnic of this or settle down to work? Come on right with you, boss. Get, get down from here and bring me a lantern. You heard it. What are you standing there? Get a light so we can see with it. What's up, Dapper? What are you looking for? Ghosts. Yeah? Well, I'll look with you. Over here. Hey, what's this all about? What's going on there? Do you recognize him? Recognize him? That's Mike. He used to be a pal of mine. A pal of ours. He still is, for that matter. He just took this original way of telling us that Williams has an idea in his head. You don't say. Well, I don't like that guy, Williams. That's the kind of a guy that... I'll tell you what he is. What? He's not as bright as he thinks. Yeah? I'll tell you something else. We're gonna be a smart, see? Yeah? We get the furs out of here, run the truck back on the highway somewhere, and dump Mike beside it. That'll give Mr. Williams something to figure out. Hey, that's a great idea, you know that? Hey, Skip! Pete! On your toes! I want three or four bales of this taken in the cabin to look over. And I want this bus out of here in half an hour. You know, this happened to me in Mexico once, and I... Dog nearly drove me crazy. Dog, are you gone? Yeah, a little fellow. Nosing along about dawn and started licking my face. The more I objected, the now more... Now, wait a minute. Look, Tom, will you cut out the bedtime stories and do what I tell you again? I think I got these knots tired. Get your thumb. You got them tired. Say, so, hey, after all the work I put in on them? This angleworm wrestling is losing its appeal for me. Feels better. Hey, you know, Tom, there's only one thing I don't understand about this. Those guys running a racket like they are, why do they let us off so easy? We might be able to identify them later on. Well, they're not asking for any more trouble or risk than they can handle. Their racket is animal hides, not our kind of hides. Come on, let's get back to town. you two. Where do you think you're going? That's what we want to know. It's about time you guys were getting around. What do you do with your duty anyway? No, wait a minute, Bill. Uh, we were driving a truck, officer, and we're held up. Held up? Where? When? About three o'clock. A couple of mugs drive us over to the side of the road, take our truck, and take us for a ride. Only not the kind of a ride we thought it was going to be. They dumped us out up the road. Yeah. Here we are. I'll have to ask you two fellas to come back to headquarters. We'll make out a more satisfactory report. <laughs> There's one for your diary, Bill. We get held up. We have our truck taken away from us. Two hours later, the law shows up and puts us under arrest. Take it easy, Bill. We're not being arrested. This is just a formality. You tell me about the scales of justice. I only think like an ordinary human being. Don't be silly, Bill. Look, there was a holdup. And naturally, the police would pick up anybody who looks suspicious. We look suspicious. That's just routine. Yeah, but we're the guys that were driving the truck. Yeah, I know that, but we could have had a hand of what happened. 
Jobs have been pulled from the inside before, you know. Hey, what do you mean by that, Crack? You think I had something to do with it? Well, oh, take it easy, take it easy. I didn't say that, but the police might figure it that way. Hey, how'd they find out so quick? We didn't phone them. The mob that pulled the job wouldn't tip them off. Yeah, I wonder. Say, what about our little tourist friend? You're right. That thing. She got away. She could have phoned the police. By the way, whose idea was it picking her up? Huh? Hey, now, wait a minute, Tom. I mean, we... Hey, it didn't exactly break your heart when she came along. I wonder. Tom Grayson? Yeah? Inspector wants to see you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We came in together and we go out together. That's where you're mistaken. I said Grayson. Now, relax, Bill. Let me find out how we stand on this thing. Yeah, but look, Tom, what if you need some help? What am I going to do with these things? Play a tune on them? Tom Grayson, sir. Sit down. Thanks. Is your real name Grayson? Yes. Do you ever use any other name? Well, there are occasions when I've been known as Tom Evans. I thought so. Uh, what are you driving at? I have a letter from Inspector Davies of our customs department informing me that you would be in this territory on a special assignment. Well, I guess you've got the right man, all right. Sorry I wasn't on duty when you and your friend were booked last night, or you wouldn't have been put to this inconvenience. Oh, that's all right. You haven't inconvenienced me in the slightest. As a matter of fact, I've had time to work out several things. Would you mind telling me who reported the robbery last night? Certainly not. A young lady. A young lady? What was her name? She didn't give her name. She seemed very mysterious about the whole thing. I had her call checked, but up to now, nothing more has been learned about her. Hmm. Uh, may I ask a favor, sir? A letter from Inspector Davis requests that I give you every assistance you may need. Now, uh, this may sound a bit out of line, but I'd like the gentleman I shared the cell with last night kept where he is for the time being. That could be arranged. It'll be much safer there for him, and it'll make it a lot easier for me. Is there anything else that we can do for you? No, I don't believe there is. Right now, the way things stand, I'm going to have to work this out on my own. Thanks for your cooperation. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks. Hello, boys. Holy mackerel, where did you come from? Where's Bill? Is he with you? Bill? Why, I thought he'd be here. You ain't seen Bill at all? No, not since the holdup. What happened? Well, the truck was hijacked and I was knocked cold. I woke up lying on the side of the road. Bill had ducked out on me. That's funny. I thought sure he'd be here. What happened to the truck? Well, whoever did the job must have got away with it. I had to thumb my way back. Well, it's a good thing you came back. Foster's been on the warpath, and you'll have plenty of explaining to do to both him and the provincial police. Sure, I'll tell him anything he wants to know. But uh, how about my job? A job? Here? <laughs> you can't expect me to hire you again. You'll have to check with Foster. What's he got to do with it? That's your department, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry, Tom. I'd like to help you, but... No, no, you'll have to have a talk with Foster. And if he says hi, you, okay. Is he in? Yeah, he's working late tonight. Well, thanks. I'll be seeing you. Come in. Mr. Foster? Certainly. What can I do for you, Mr. Evans? United States Customs Service. I'd like to talk to you about... About the robberies this company has been encountering recently? Yes, that's right. Mm. I'm glad to see you fellows taking an interest. Perhaps we'll get some action now. Sit down. Thank you. There are a few points, Mr. Forster, that I'd like to clear up. I thought maybe you could help me. I'd be glad to. Certainly want to do all I can to stop these losses. What's the approximate value of the furs taken during these robberies? Close to $175,000. And apparently none of these furs have turned up in Canada. That is the baffling element. That uh, furs of doubtful origin keep turning up in San Francisco, which explains the interest of the United States Customs Service. Did you know the driver who operated the truck last night? No. Why do you ask? Well, I wanted a complete checkup made on all the drivers. Well, I never have anything to do with the drivers. That department is capably handled by Ralph Collins, the warehouse foreman. Then I'll begin my investigation there. Uh, by the way, would it be possible for you to give me some sort of a note without disclosing my identity, of course? It would give me free reign in the plan? Yeah, certainly. I think that should take care of you all right. Well, thank you for your cooperation. Call on me any time. What a session. 
I never want to go through a third degree like that again. The way things are, Tom, you've got to be careful. Now, in a case like this, I want Foster's okay. Did he give it to you? Yeah, I finally got it. It took a long time. He gave me a note. Okay. Be back tomorrow at midnight, and I'll be ready to start rolling. Thanks. We eat again, boy, and that's something. <laughs> What? Well, hello, the little tourist. Now, uh, don't tell me I'm in San Francisco. That's where you were going, wasn't it? That's where we were going. The new clothes. Say, where'd you get the scenery? I thought you were broke. Oh, I have a girlfriend. Say, wait a minute. Never mind me. How did you get out there? I never expected to see you again. Oh, you thought I'd become a newspaper headline by this time. Truck driver and helper, slain on Lonely Road. Seriously, what did happen? They pulled an April Fool on us. I thought they were taking us on one of those never-to-return rides you hear about. Instead, they tapped us on the head and dumped us out about 80 miles from there. Lovely people. Oh, sounds awful. How'd you get back? Oh, uh, I got left. I waited hours, it seemed, and then the only good Samaritan who took an interest was heading in this direction. And then I got to think. What about? Oh, that it wasn't so imperative that I get to San Francisco as I thought. I had a job there for me, a good one. But I could also go back to one here until I'd earned my fare. Oh, a parlor car and safety, right? Speaking of safety and comfort, would you go in for trusting me on another trip right now? I mean, to some place where we can sit down and do what we're doing here. You know, talk, but with accommodations. And no detours? No detours. How'd you feel when you realized what was happening last night? Like a clay duck in a shooting gallery. Scared to death, eh? You know, you were pretty nice getting me out of that the way you did. Almost as though, well, you were an old hand at it. You know, something just occurred to me. About last night? No, about you. I've been answering a lot of questions and getting nowhere with mine. Women have a habit of getting away with that, don't they? They have a habit of getting away with any number of things. All right, suppose I answer your questions. The answer's depending, of course, upon what you ask. Fair enough. And suppose I do the asking while we dance. The plot's perfectly clear, you know. With my mind on the music, you'd think I'll tell you. Well, I'm waiting. What for? What you brought me out here to do. All right. Now, the truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, do you like dancing with me? Uh, maybe I'd better skip that. Why? It might give you a large opinion of yourself. Oh, that's all right with me. You see, you're not my idea of a truck driver on this night off. You dance more or less as though, well, you were an old hand at this, too. Now, uh, just a minute, young lady. You were to answer questions, not make speculations. All right, carry on. Why were you so mysterious about that phone call to the police? There was nothing mysterious about it. I, I just didn't want to get involved, that's all. Another thing is, why does an attractive girl pick a dark night to be in a gloomy neighborhood down by that warehouse? Who said she was an attractive girl? I did. And if you'll let me, I'll elaborate on that theme all the way home. A good idea. I'm an excellent listener. Well, it's been nice seeing you again, Thomas, old fellow. Only a beginning, my friend. Prepare to get used to it. That's a promise I'll prepare. It's a promise. Good night. Good night. Oh, hello, Tim. Hi. Any more orders for me tonight, boss? No, oh, that's all. You can go now. Say, did you give that driver his job back again? What driver? The one that Ralph sent up to see you tonight. Ralph didn't send anybody up to see me. The only man who's been up to see me tonight was a U.S. government man named Evan. Government man? Yes. What are you doing to me, Ned? He asked me for an OK note so that he could look around the plant. He must have used it to get a driver's job with Ralph. Sure, he must have. He was one of the drivers on that last truck that was knocked over. 
What are you going to do now? Do? Do? Nothing. Let him go. Let Silver and Dapper know they're not to pull any job tomorrow night. The government man will drive the truck through, but you'll be at the warehouse when he leaves and let me know if everything's okay. Right. Oh, it's you. There must be news when you show up. There is. Where's Skip and the old lady? On their way down with a load. Why? Plenty. The United States Customs got their hair up the way this stuff's been run across the border. One of them popped in all steamed up and he's gonna drive the truck. So what? So back seat for a while. Porters. And go screwy playing cards while that door's floating around? Oh, no. The dealer says back seat for a while and that's the way you play it unless... Go ahead. Unless what? Unless you want to deal a new game. This game's been pretty sweet up to now. Maybe we'd better stick to the rules and let it go at that. Yeah, that's my vote. Suppose we do stick to the rules, just for old time's sake. Okay. I'll be going back to town. Remember, lay off that truck tomorrow night. I'll be seeing you guys. Silver, all good things come to an end. And sometimes they get better. What's on your mind? Us. We're going to graduate, you and me. Yeah, how? I don't fancy no business that gets too hot. Well, come on. Come on out with it. What are you driving at? Williams gives Foster orders. Foster gives Tim orders, and Tim gives us orders. We get all the dirty work, and they get all the dough. Let's be smart, Silver. All right. How? You remember that guy that made us the proposition to take any extra stuff off our hands? You mean Beachman? We're going to do business with them and get out of this owl's nest. What's the matter? You getting jumpy? Yeah, this joint drives me nuts. Come on, let's get going, will you? All right. Get Beachman over here and make a deal. Meanwhile, Skip and the old lady are on their way down to Williams with a regular load. And by the time he and Foster get wise, well, I get it. We'll be out of sight and sitting pretty. What do you say to getting started tonight? The sooner the better. Come on, let's go. I got my job back, and I'm driving one of the trucks through tomorrow night. Fine, Tom. What brings you back here now? Well, I've got a hunch that watching the border for a while may bring some results. They may try to slip some of the furs through. Why tonight? They hijacked that truck last night. They won't want to hold on to that stuff any longer than they can help. I think they'll try and slip it across tonight. Do whatever you think best. Yes, sir. Right. How are you tonight? Oh, no cakes. Same with you. Found for Seattle again? Yeah, Ma's been off color again lately. Sure wish I didn't have to roll her so far for those treatments, but I guess that's the way it goes. Too bad. Well, she'd mind my saying hello? She'd mind if you didn't. She's got some of your pet cookies. Oh, boy, I'll be seeing you. about you eating again, Mother? You're looking fit as a stick. Uh -huh. Oh, it's you, John. I didn't realize we'd got to the border already. I must have dozed off. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you. Say, you two gonna chin all night? We gotta be going. I guess my hunch was all right. Certain time you got the right man. There's no doubt about it. Come on, John, we gotta get going. These people aren't going on, Marlowe. I want them held here a moment. Understand. What's what's the idea? What are you holding us for? Take it easy, Skip. What do you mean, Skip? Well, that's a name, isn't it? And a pretty good one, considering what you're up to. Go on, John. Tell him. Tell him about Ma and me. There must be to... some mistake. Here. No mistake. You come with me. Search the car and trailer. Hmm. Well, 
you want. Let's see. Uh, let's see that, madam. There's nothing there. Oh, just a minute. It's an outrage. Look at that. You think I'd ever live to see a day like this? Oh, no. You'll have to get up. Well, it looks like we got something here. Who do you take orders from in running this stuff over the line? You're the smart guy, not me. Suppose you figure that out like you did all this. Can't you get it into your head that pointing out who's responsible, you're going to make it a lot easier on yourself? Oh, all I got to do is talk, is that it? Yes, that's right. All right. I'll tell you who's in back of it. Santa Claus. He made us a present of the stuff. All right, now let me tell you something. You're faced with more than a smuggling charge. There was a man found dead at the wheel of a truck. You know whose truck it was? It was the truck you drove off with after the holdup. That means only one thing, young man, murder. I didn't do that, I tell you, I didn't do it. Who did? Tell him, Skip, please. If you don't die, well, I can't go on with this. You keep your mouth shut and tight. Take it easy. Better get it off your chest, Mrs. Jones. It's the best thing you can do. I'm telling you this because I think it'll help my son, Skip. You know what this is gonna mean for me now, don't you? I don't believe it, Skip. Go on, Mrs. Jones. Skip got mixed up with these men. And for some money, he agreed to let him use the Oak Knoll trailer camp I run as their headquarters. I didn't know much about it in the beginning, and then... Go on. Well, one night, after the Arctic Company truck had been robbed, a young man came to the camp, and the others were still there, skipping the rest of them. Yes? He was the driver of the truck that had been held up. Oh, he found the place nobody knew, or took the time to find out. He was taken outside. There was a fight out there. Skip got into it. I heard it, and then there were shots. The driver was murdered. And when they came in, they said it was Skip who had done it. And after that, they had you where they wanted you, is that it? Yes, they held it over me about what my son had done. Either we had to go along with them then, or... But Skip didn't do it. It was one of the others, I know it, I swear it. And through fear, you kept on being used by them? Yes, but this was to be our last trip. I begged with Skip for months. Finally tonight, he agreed on never going back. And this had to be the trip that brought us here. Will you tell us the names of these other two men? One is called Dapper and the other Silver. And where were the furs stored? Under the cabin floor. And which of these two men run this thing? Neither one. They take orders from someone higher up. Someone Skip and I have never seen. Have you anything to add to what your mother's already told us? No, the old lady's covered it. Too much of it. And you're certain you don't know who gives Dapper and Silver their orders? Yeah. Tell Marlowe to come in. John. I want these two people held in custody, pending the arrival of the provincial authority. Yes, sir. Come along with me. There's only one thing for you to do now. Uh, back up north? Yes, your next line leads out of this trailer camp, or into it, I don't know which. Right now, it leads away from here. Good luck. Everything's gone wrong. Skip and his mother should have been here hours ago with that ship. Why haven't I heard from Mike? It can only mean one thing. They found him out and took care of him. That Foster's up to something. Perhaps you should attend to it personally, Mr. Williams. Yes, you're right. I'll leave for the north immediately. You check and try and find out what happened to Skip and his mother. If you want me, you know we can reach me. Well, well, everything's all set. Beachman's coming here tomorrow night to bring the dough. He gets the furs and we're in the clear. We'll make a getaway as soon as we get the cash. If nothing goes wrong, this will be the sweetest haul we ever made. Right. If everything crops up, don't take any unnecessary chances. Don't worry about me. I'll get this load through, all right? There's a guy that's got what it takes. Yeah. Well, 
Mind if I breeze along? I got a date to catch up with. Oh, go ahead. Beat it. Hold down the front, miss. I'll go back in and make it. I'll call if anyone comes. Right. I told Dapper and Silver to lay off tonight. But I ain't so sure they're gonna do it. They seem to be up to something. Now listen, Tim, you get on down there and tell them this is an order from me. No back talk. They better lay off. Boys, what are you doing here? Just thought I'd pay you lads a little bit. How about we get in the car? Wait a minute. You didn't come all the way down here just to play cards. What are you getting excited about, boy? Something bothering you? Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. This smells like a checkup, is it? Okay, you asked for it. I didn't like the way you guys took it when I told you to lay off the truck tonight. Other things you don't like, but it's none of your business. Maybe this time it is. What I said about that government man goes. Because here's one guy who ain't sticking his neck out for trouble. Who said we had any idea of dragging out of this place tonight? Maybe a little bird whispered. Maybe I was just dreaming. Anyway, I'm warning you. What the little bird didn't tell him is we're getting out of here in the right night. You think the big rig is wise? Whatever he is. Our payoff man gets here at midnight. We collect and leave. And by daylight, we'll be getting out of here like ABC. Foster in? Yes, won't you come in, please? Smith. Well, they said it. Dapper and Silver are giving you the runaround. What are you jabbering about? I drove out to the camp tonight after the truck took off. Because I had a hunch about those guys. Go on, go on. What happened? After I told them to lay off, I started back to town. Well, that's what they thought. Go on, get to the point, will you? They're taking that truck tonight, selling out the whole load, and leaving you holding the bag. You get back to the office and stay there until I get in touch with you. I want you there in case anybody takes a sudden interest in my papers. 
When I get back, we may have to clear out. You ought to make it by the time the payoff man arrives. I'll show them a few tips in payoffs they're not expecting. Hey, listen, Dapper. No mistakes tonight. There's one job you can't muff. Suppose you attend to your own affairs. I'll be all right. All right, I'm just telling you. Take it easy, you hear? Wait a minute, you got a little explaining to do. Come here. Come on. Come on now. Leave me alone. All right, take it easy, sister. Come on, you ain't going no place. Hey, you can't do this to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing around this camp? Let me out of here. I'll call the police. Never mind the act. You're going to tell me what you're doing around here or not? All right, I'll tell you. My brother was a driver on one of those trucks that you and your gang hijacked. And I've got a hunch that he just didn't take that robbery sitting down. He came back here to find out a few things, and you caught him. He was never found after that. What did you do with him? Hey, you're a little bit too smart for your own good. You know that, don't you? Come on. What are you going to do with me? I don't know yet, but I'm going to park you in that closet till I find out what to do with you. Come on. Now remember, do just what I told you. All right. Nice going, pal. Just don't twitch your hair, nobody will get hurt. Now get this straight, I'm the guy that's driving this bus. You're the one behind the wheel, doing what he's told. Now make her pound. When a guy sticks his neck out twice, then he's got it coming to him, ain't he? Yeah, I suppose so. Why? Because you've been a government man as you are, you know I can't afford to take any chances with you. Well, who said I was... Stick him in that trailer, Pete, and stay with him. Go on, get going. All right, boyfriend. Get moving. Hey, a dame dropped in on us. Smart, or she thinks she was. I told her it was the wrong night for calling. Aren't we going to get on with our business? Hey, she's got it in the head that somebody put a guy away out here without notifying the coroner. One of the Arctic drivers. Forget the dame. Let's get this job finished and get out. That's right. All I want is the furs. I'm just as anxious as you are to get out of here. You'll get your furs all right. There's a whole truckload of them outside and a fortune under the floor here. What do you think of that? The trouble with your racket is as long on hours, short on pay. In the long run, what does it get you? Yeah, I'll tell you what it gets you. On the right side of a set of steel bars looking in on smart guys like you. Almost perfect. How many are there? More than you can get rid of in six months. But where's the dough to make them yours? Yeah, that's what I want to know, too. You boys have kept your promise, and I'll keep mine. It's all there. And where they are, Silver and Dapper, as close to that money as they'll ever get. Oh, 
was that an idea you couldn't play on the level too long? Too much temptation. Too bad. Why shouldn't we? We do all the dirty work and you get all the dough. Why shouldn't we get some of the gravy? That's all you're good for is the dirty work. Now, wait a minute, Foster. Let's get together on this. We can cut you in on it. You've cut yourself out of all deals from now on by bungling this job and holding up a government agent against my orders, too. Government agent? What have you men gotten me into? You keep your blubbering mouth shut. Because you didn't have anything to do with baiting this deal and selling them on the idea. I had nothing to do with this. It was Silver. He came to me last week. Your little mistake in this swindle is going to cost you just what you brought along in that briefcase. And you're lucky to get off that easy. Take it easy there, Foster. Take it easy. Guns right where they are. Drop. Well, have I interrupted something? You certainly have, and just in time, too. Uh, what's going on here? Who's this? Silver and Dapper were selling out to him. You sure you had nothing to do with this, Foster? Why, no, of course. I was tipped off last night that they were going to double cross us, and I got here just in time to spoil the deal. That's a lie. We were going about our own business. I don't want to hear anything from you, too. I have my own ideas as to what your business has been. Come on, you. Get out of here. Well, there's only one thing to do now, is put these boys where they can't give us any more trouble. Get out of here as quickly as we can. See, we can't tie them up. You got some rope around here or something? Yeah. Well, there they are. Hope you boys don't get too lonesome. Come on, let's get going. No, you don't. Get over there. I'll take that. Who are you? A government agent. Remember me, Foster? Who's in there? Open that door. Untie that girl and make it snappy. What are you doing here? It's a long story. Never mind, you can tell me later. Right now, get on the phone, call the provincial police, and tell them to get out here as fast as they can. It's a pleasure, my friend, a pleasure. Foster signed a complete confession that covers everything. And according to a statement, Mother Jones told the truth about that murder. Well, it was Silver who killed Miss Lane's brother. Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. The search for your brother had to end this way. Well, that's going to be my next assignment, I hope. Helping her to forget. Your next assignment? is to keep away from this office until I receive an invitation to the wedding. Then you can deliver it personally, both of you. Now I know what is meant by orders from headquarters. 